But now let's suppose that we guessed incorrectly or just guessed something else. Suppose we guessed that egg was the limiting reagent. And now from this statement, we'll calculate how much mix we would need assuming that egg was the limiting reagent. What does that mean? That means we'll run out of egg first. So we have one cup of egg. That's what we had in our refrigerator. And we multiply it by a fraction that comes from the balanced reaction. For every cup of mix, we only need one quarter cup of egg. And so we would need for our one cup of egg, four cups of pancake mix. Well, we don't have four cups of pancake mix. And since we don't have four cups of pancake mix, that means that our initial guess that egg was the limiting reagent is incorrect. So we would go back and we would guess again. Hopefully we would guess pancake mix. But if we guessed milk, we would go through this calculation and we would find once again that we don't have enough pancake mix because pancake mix is the limiting reagent. All right, so now that method is what we call method one, and there's nothing special about that. I actually prefer this next method, so if you kind of didn't get what we just did, that's not so bad, because I'm going to show you a method that's basically the same thing, but you may, be able, you may find that it's a little easier. What we're going to do, it requires more calculations, I should mention. So method two requires more calculations, but conceptually it might be a little bit easier. We're going to calculate the amount of product that you can make, assuming each one of the uh, reagents or each one of the ingredients is the limiting ingredient or limiting reagent. And the one that produces the least amount of product, that's the one that obviously we would run out of first, and so that's our limiting reagent. So it means that you have to do a calculation for every single one of your reagents or every single one of your ingredients. So let's do that. The number of pancakes that you could make if the pancake mix were the limiting reagent is two cups mix, which is again what we started with in the pantry, times 12 pancakes divided by one cup of mix, that comes from the, your recipe, and we can make 24 pancakes. If instead we calculate the number of pancakes we can make if egg is the limiting reagent, one cup of egg, which is what we had in the fridge, times 12 pancakes divided by a quarter cup of an egg, that's the recipe, um, from, fraction from the recipe, so we could make 48 pancakes, and similarly with milk, we could make 48 pancakes. The calculation is exactly the same. Now we focus on the one where we can make the fewest number of pancakes, which in this case is the first um, calculation. And what that means is pancake mix is the limiting reagent. Now, obviously, we have to come up with the same answer regardless of whether we do method one or method two. But so it's reassuring that we got that. You can see that this method, you do more calculations, but um, since you do the same calculation over and over again, you might find that it's actually uh, a somewhat easier method. Bottom line is, we're going to run out of pancake mix first. The, um, and the nice thing about method two is, you kind of directly determine the number of um, pancakes that you make. And this, again, is what you call the theoretical yield. So how much you should be able to make based on your ingredients is what we call the theoretical yield. So that would be the theoretical yield. All right, now let's try to take this exact same machinery and turn it into a chemistry problem. In our chemistry problem, we're going to look at, we've got calcium chloride reacting with sodium phosphate to form calcium phosphate and sodium chloride. And this is a balanced reaction here, but of course, if it weren't balanced, you would have to balance it first. And what it says is three moles of calcium chloride and two moles of sodium phosphate react to form one mole of calcium phosphate and six moles of sodium chloride. The question reads, what is the maximum amount of calcium phosphate that can be produced from 0.7 moles of calcium chloride and 1.8 moles of sodium phosphate? So method one says we're going to guess that one of them is the limiting reagent, that either calcium chloride or sodium phosphate is the limiting reagent. So let's guess that sodium phosphate is the limiting reagent. Okay, Totally arbitrary, but we'll guess that. And then Using the balanced reaction, we're going to multiply by a fraction that relates calcium chloride to sodium phosphate, three moles of calcium chloride, that's that three there, divided by two moles of sodium phosphate, that's that two there, gives 2.7 moles of calcium chloride. This represents how much calcium chloride we would need to react with all of the 1.8 moles of sodium phosphate. Now, clearly from our original problem, we don't have 2.7 moles of calcium chloride. We only have 0.7 moles of calcium chloride. So what that means is our assumption that sodium phosphate was the limiting reagent is incorrect. And in fact, since there are only two reagents, we can conclude that calcium chloride must be the limiting reagent. Okay, so calcium chloride is the limiting reagent and we only have 0.7 moles. Now we focus on calcium chloride to calculate how much calcium phosphate we can make. What we're gonna do is multiply our 0.70 moles of calcium chloride 
times something that relates calcium chloride to calcium phosphate, one mole of calcium phosphate over three moles of calcium chloride, and that's equal to 0 0.233 moles of calcium phosphate. Okay. So the answer to the problem is we can make 2.33 moles, but notice we first had to figure out what the limiting reagent was, what we're going to run out of first. All right, let's repeat this problem now, but let's use method two. Method two says that we're going to have to calculate how much calcium phosphate we make from each one of the reagents and then figure out which one we can make the least of. So for instance, we have 0.7 moles of calcium chloride, that's our data, that's what we had in the refrigerator, times one mole of calcium phosphate over three moles of calcium chloride yields 0.233 moles of calcium phosphate. If we repeat that calculation with 1.8 moles of sodium phosphate, of course the fraction is different because the fraction from the balanced reaction is different. What we get is 0 0.90 moles of calcium phosphate. Clearly we would run out of calcium chloride well before we used up all of the sodium phosphate. And so this is the number we're going to focus on as being smaller of the two. That means the calcium chloride was the limiting reagent. Um, and that means that the amount of calcium phosphate we can make, the maximum amount, is 0.233 moles. All right, so what have we talked about here? Well, we need to be able to determine the limiting reagent. We need to be able to determine what we're going to run out of first. And what we run out of first determines how much maximum product we can make, and that's called the theoretical yield. But it also allows us to determine how much of each of the other reagents that we're going to need. And this is the kind of thing that you would have to do whenever you do synthesis. So whenever you make any kind of um, new chemical compound, you would be expected to calculate the theoretical yield, how much material you expect to be able to make, and that's always going to depend on the limiting reagent.